So our spotlight, we've got a, an intensity here. We can bump that up, lower it down. Now it doesn't shine on our floor very well, and the reason being is um, we just need to add some more uh, divisions to our cube. So I'm going to select my cube. I'm going to go into the channel box. Under the input nodes, I'm going to click on polycube1. I'm going to click on the word subdivisions width, and then sh hold my shift button down and click on subdivisions depth. That way it selects all three of those. And now I can middle mouse drag on my screen. And as I add divisions, the more divisions I have, you can see uh, what the light's doing a lot better. All right, so that's pretty good there. I've got my division set on 15. I'm going to select my light again. And again, you can select it through uh, your... Uh, through your rendering hypershade. I just went ahead and just clicked on my light. I'm going to click on the attributes for it, which is up here on my shelf, or actually not shelf, my status line. Click on that, and now we're back over here. And you can see, we can see what it's doing on our floor now. All right, um, to make our adjustments, when I use a spotlight, I always use either linear or quadratic, just because it's more realistic. So I'm going to click on Quadraic, and now as you can see, we can't see our light at all, so we need to really bump up the intensity. So I'm going to try 1,000. Let's try 5,000. 5,000 works pretty good. I'm going to take my cone angle right here, and I'm just going to bump that up so that our light shines um, more area. Okay, I've got a really bright hot spot, so to get rid of that hot spot, I'm going to go down to where it says drop off and just bump that up some. There we go. I could also move my light back and uh, up if I wanted to, but that's probably good right there. Okay, it, our room's still kind of dark, so I'm going to add another light. Actually, before we do that, with our attribute still open for our spotlight, uh, click on where it says shadows down here because we want some shadows going. And right there, we're, once we expand that, you should see ray trace shadows. I'm going to click on use ray trace shadows. I'm going to leave everything default. And I'm going to add another light now. I'm going to go back to my shelf under rendering. And I'm going to click on, this time I'm going to click on a, uh, a point light. Let's see, move that over to this side of our bottle towards our camera so it lights up that side. All right, that's probably good. And as far as the brightness goes, that's actually pretty good. And our rendering settings, I'm going to do another save. File, save scene as. And I'm going to change this to underscore two. All right, uh, render settings. Software renders pretty fast. I'm just going to leave it on there. And I'm not going to get in the uh, middle ray because the uh, caustic tutorial that I'm going to be telling you about shows you how to uh, do a middle ray. So I'm just going to use software, but since we're using some ray tracing, we need to go down under our uh, software tab. You need to go down where it says ray tracing quality, expand that, and then turn on ray tracing. Uh, reflections, we can bump that to two. Uh, again, refractions, you need to make sure it's uh, at least four since it's got to go through four surfaces of our bottle. Uh, default 6, that's fine. Um, that should be it. Let's do a test render. I'm going to view camera setting resolution gate so I can see what it's going to look like. And let's do a test render. Alright, not bad. Our label is getting really washed out. So we'll need to look at that. And our bottle's looking pretty nice. All right, let's make a few adjustments. I'm going to keep this image. Close that out. Window, rendering editor, type of shade. There's our label material. I'm going to double click on that. And look what we have down here. All right, our specularity. I'm going to pull all this down some. All right, and as far as our bottle, let me double click on our bottle, go down to our refractive index, or actually, uh, refract, yeah, refractive index, and I'm just going to double that. 
So I'll just make it about two. See what that looks like now. Let's re-render this out. All right, the bottle looks uh, a lot better. Let's close it back out. I am going to adjust this spotlight. All right, the attributes. The drop off, I'm going to pull that back up brighter because I don't want to lose a light. Uh, and I'm going to move this back away from our bottle. And lift it up a little bit. Letter T, make sure the focal point is still shining on our bottle. Alright, there we go. Let's see what that's going to look like. Now it's just uh, tweaking and just getting it to look right, the light. Alright, so you can see our bottle is looking really nice. Got some nice highlights on there. Our label is not all uh, washed out anymore. Okay, now as far as our bottle goes, we can't see the uh, wine layer that we did. And the reason being is all we need to do is select our bottle, go up to Create UVs, and click on Cylindrical Mapping again. Now if we re-render that out, you can see we've got a, uh, a line there for where our, our wine is. Now everything's still a little too bright, so I'm going to go back to the Hypershade, double click on our bottle material, Reopens the attributes and transparency. Far right, I'm going to click on the button and I'm just going to make some adjustments here. I'll make this a little darker. Make everything a little darker actually. Alright, I don't want to be too dark, but let's just do a test render and see what we got. Alright, so yeah, it's, that's a little too dark. Let's see if we can get this in one more try. Alright. I'm like at six again. Look at my label. All right, so everything looks good. Let's try this one more time. There's our render. That looks good. The only thing we need to do now is just turn up our light because it's a little too dark. So let's pull up our hyper shade, go to our light tabs, our point light. Oh, we need to press 7 in our view panel here. And there's our uh, wine bottle, so everything looks good. The only thing we need to do now is do a final render. Go back to our software tab, change the quality to highest quality. I'm going to go to my comments tab and let's make this nice and big so y'all can see. Alright, and that's it. So you can tweet as much as you want to uh, get whatever effects you uh, want to get. Um, there is a tutorial in Maya Help. Let me show you where that's at now. Let me go ahead and do a final save on this. All right, if you go up to Maya Help, wait for that to open up. You should see something similar to this. Up here on the left hand side you'll see learning resources. If you expand that out you'll see tutorials. If you expand that out you'll see uh, getting started with Maya or Maya Unlimited. Um, expand the Maya. 
then you should see rendering. So if you expand rendering, you'll see caustics right here, less than five caustics. If you expand that out, you'll see the introduction. And you can see they also used a green uh, colored bottle. They use Fong E materials, so you can either use the file uh, that they use for the lesson, or you can use the uh, bottle that you just modeled. Um, open scene tells you how to open up the uh, scene that they included with your Maya. Here they start showing you how to render it out with uh, Mental Ray and how to start adding uh, your caustics to it to make a more realistic uh, looking bottle. So check that out and good luck and thank you for watching.